We all do it. Spend money on stuff we really don't need, from top-of-the-line appliances with features we'll never use to designer clothing we'll rarely wear. But there's a big difference between splurging on luxuries and throwing away money on products and services that are worthless or unnecessary or that you could get for free. I'm Herb Weisbaum, the Consumer Man, a contributing editor at Checkbook.org. Welcome to Consumerpedia at Checkbook.org. We're the nonprofit that helps consumers select services, avoid trouble, and save money. Because we don't accept any advertising or take money from any business we recommend, you can rely on Checkbook.org to be completely independent and objective. Now, here's the host of Consumerpedia, America's consumer expert, the consumer man, Herb Weisbaum. One of the things we do here at Checkbook is to warn you about products, services, or extras that are overhyped or a waste of money. Drawing from that collection of advice, our executive editor, Kevin Brassler, put together a list of 65 things you should probably not pay for. Kevin, you're not going to run down the entire list, are you? Well, I mean, we can. How much time do we have? <laughs> uh, we'll pick and choose so our audience doesn't yeah. all run away. <laughs> right. And what you're going to do is you're going to cover some of the highlights from that list of 65, which, of course, is up on the website, checkbook.org. Let's start, first of all, how did you come up with a list and only keep it to 65? Yeah, well, it wasn't easy. And you know, it basically went through all the different advice that Checkbook has given over the years and pulled out snippets of things that usually when, when we were doing the research or when you were even writing about it, Herb, that surprised us. We found that duct cleaning work, for example, just isn't useful. There's no independent research that indicates that it actually improves dust levels in your home, that all these little mini insurance policies people try to sell you really aren't worth it once you dig into them. But I think overall, you know, long term, we're hoping to write a book out of this and it'll be even more than 65 because one of the ways we advise folks on how to save money is that you really do have to shop around before you buy anything, whether it's roofing work or a new TV or anything. There are just big price differences out there. But you also have to be aware that, you know, there's just a lot of sophisticated marketing noise these days that dupes us into buying products and services that just aren't worth the money at all. Either you can get it for free or it's just a wasteful buy. And that's what we've tried to focus on here. So let's start with one that's at the top of my list, purchase protection, service contracts, that sort of thing. I bought a calculator last year and at checkout, they said, do you want to get the insurance protection on that? It's like it was a $12 calculator. Are you kidding me? But they sell these quote unquote insurance policies or service contracts on absolutely everything these days because that's where they're making the money. Yeah, I mean, I bought a network cable the other day for eight ninety five, eight dollars and ninety five cents, and had to say no. I don't want the service contract for this thing. Uh, these things are insidious these days, and it's not just service contracts for electronics. It's trip protection plans. It's home warranties. People are trying to sell warranties for your utility lines, your water and sewer lines these days. Apple Care. On and on. They're everywhere. No matter, it seems like no matter what you buy these days, you have to, you know, run away from these offers. And they're often couched in terms like, you know, protect your purchase or protect your investment, you know, this large cash purchase you've made for a vacation or something. And they say they're offering total protection, but we've dug into the details on all these plans and haven't yet found one of these little mini insurance policies people are trying to sell you that was worth buying at all. They're big profit centers for the folks that are selling them. But for most consumers, they're just really bad deals. But if you're going to buy one, and we really suggest you don't, but if you do shop around, for example, there's companies that sell standalone policies. You don't have to buy from the retailer where you bought the thing or where you've even booked the trip. And then also, a lot of times you can get, say, for product warranties, you can get extended warranties effectively for free. Uh, my credit card, for example, automatically doubles the length of any manufacturer's warranty for free. And, and Herb, you know, you bought a computer at Costco and it came with a warranty extension that you didn't have to pay for. Yeah, the computer we're using right now to produce this podcast, Costco doubles the warranty. And then I found out if you use the Costco credit card to buy it, they add two more years onto that warranty. So on this brand new computer, I have a four-year warranty and I didn't pay a dime for it. And that's why I buy a lot of my electronics from Costco because of that extra warranty protection. Yeah, and that so many you know credit card companies, even stores are offering these warranty extensions for free. 
indicates that the ones being sold by others just really aren't worth that much. One that really bugs me are companies trying to sell you a service contract or warranty on your car after you bought it. Some of these are scams, the robocalls are endless, some are just not worth the money, but they're so persuasive. Yeah, and it's in terms of the selling tactics, it's by far one of the worst products out there. Uh, they're just inundating people with robocalls uh, and mailers. Often they're disguising their mailers. They make it seem like it's coming from your auto manufacturer. There are checkbook staffers who don't even own cars who get these calls, warning them about their warranty on their car is going to expire and they better buy this product to protect themselves against expensive future repairs. There are companies out there that are offering plans under the guise of, you know, big expensive repairs they might have down the road. And really, that's what a lot of these sellers of warranties are doing. If I don't buy this thing, I might have these big bills down the road, big repair bills. Or if I need to cancel my trip, right, I might have, you know, big cancellation penalties. And then they turn around and offer a product that seems to protect against that risk. But once we've dug into these policies, a lot of the ones that are sold, uh, there are just thousands and thousands of complaints lodged against these companies for failure to pay claims. They really work hard, a lot of them, not to pay off on the policy that you bought. For vehicle service contracts, we dug into several plans, and there were so many exclusions, things like you know batteries for hybrid cars, things like that, braking systems, that we were really left wondering what's even left on the car to cover with this policy. You know, there were page after page of exclusions. And if you're getting trip cancellation insurance, which I happen to be buying because I'm taking a very expensive cruise and because of the pandemic, make sure you get one that covers any reason you could possibly cancel, which are a bit more because most of the other ones now exclude the pandemic. Most people don't realize that. So if you buy one of the typical policies and you have to cancel because of the pandemic, it's going to absolutely be null and void. So if you're going to do it, you might got to make sure you at least get one that covers what possibly could happen right now in the midst of a pandemic. Yeah, I mean, what the airlines and and travel booking sites are offering uh, at checkout, and you really have to say, no, I don't want to protect my airfare purchase. Uh, Those are trip interruption and cancellation policies. And as you said, there's lots of exclusions there and exclusions you wouldn't think that would be part of a trip cancellation policy, right? Like, so hurricanes, if there's a hurricane, no, the policy, you can't collect on it, right? If there's an earthquake or civil unrest or a pandemic, they don't apply. So if you really are worried about having to cancel a trip, yeah, you want to get these standalone cancel for any reason plans. They're more expensive, but at least there's no built-in excuses for denying you the claim if you need to make one. For most people, your home is the biggest expense you'll ever have in your life. So when someone says, do you want a home warranty to protect this major investment? It sounds like something you should probably do. Yeah. And the the problem is, is that the plans being sold, the home warranties being sold, again, like these other policies, they promise total protection. But once you dig into them, there's lots of policy exclusions and they're expensive. They cost $600 to $1,000 or more per year. And then when you dig into them, you find, well, no, you know, there's lots of exclusions, like the most expensive repairs you'd worry about, like say a flooded basement or crawl space or a leaky roof, things like that, they're not even covered at all. And even among the, the things that are covered in your home, say your refrigerator and freezer, well, a lot of them exclude your ice maker from coverage. And why? Well, that's the thing that tends to break the most on refrigerators. You also have to pay a copay. Anytime you need a repair and somebody comes out, you have to pay $75 to $125 for that which doesn't make sense because most appliance repairs, for example, only cost the average appliance repair is like $150. The worst thing about these home warranty plans, and they're really bad, is that you don't get to pick the company that does the work. The home warranty company sends someone. And we're not convinced at all based on the complaints we see and the companies that they send that they're selecting the best. On top of that, that company they send to your home, they're not working for you They're working for the warranty companies. So you don't get a choice in the company that's sent. The home warranty company is picking for you. Yet the home warranty contracts themselves absolve the warranty company from any problems that are created by that company. So if they come out and they make the problem worse or they break something else or they, you know, fry your entire electrical system, well, you're on the hook for that problem, not the home warranty company. Let's talk about two other things related to the house, the duct cleaning and the basement waterproofers. We touched on duct cleaning before. The biggest problem I have, and because there's been a lot of uh, news coverage about this, they used to say this would make you healthier. This would prevent getting 
getting asthma or colds or the flu or whatever during the cold and flu season. And of course, there's absolutely no proof, and the EPA has said this categorically, that cleaning your air ducts do anything to improve your health. Period. Bottom line. Yeah. And in some jurisdictions, some of these cleaning companies have gotten in trouble for making these claims because there's no independent research anywhere that indicates that this is beneficial to you in terms of dust levels in the home. Uh, The one study that was done, independent of the duct cleaning industry, found that after cleanings, dust levels went up in the homes that were cleaned and then came back down to where they were to begin with. Most people, I think, would say, well, you know, I clean my home, I dust, and yet that's the one area I can't reach are these ducts. And there's probably a lot of dust up in there. And there probably is a lot of dust up in there. Uh, The issue is, is that it's mostly inert. It's not as if, you know, it's just going to be all of a sudden blown throughout your home every time the furnace or air conditioner cycles on. Uh, Really, the best thing you can do to lower dust levels is to clean regularly, but also replace your filters, your furnace and air conditioning filters. That will help also. And that's something you should do anyways as a maintenance task. But, you know, the ads always show these pictures of this gross mold and fungus growing all over the place inside your ducts. Yeah. And, you know, if you have vermin or some kind of infestation, then, yeah, you want to get that cleaned out. But the work these duct cleaning companies are doing overall, there's no independent research that indicates it's truly beneficial. A big problem with these duct cleaning companies is they do the work sloppily and actually damage your duct work. Huh. Right. They created an even bigger problem than what you started with. Uh, we keep our vermin in the backyard, by the way. So we're all covered. <laughs> we, in that do, one. Do, so do. we do. We have <laughs> raccoons back there. We live in a green belt, but that is a good point. And waterproofing your basement. You don't want uh, to waterproof your basement. You want a wet basement? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm what we're saying is that what basement waterproofing contractors usually offer is come into your home, use a jackhammer to crack up the floors in your basement, install drain tile and a sump pump, and collect the water that comes into your home and then shoot it back outside. And that'll solve your problem. But it doesn't really address the initial issue, which is that there's a drainage problem outside. Water isn't flowing away from your home. It's for some reason flowing toward your walls. And so usually by just cleaning out your gutters uh, and making sure when the water comes down out of your gutters, it splashes far away from your home. That way you're dealing with the problem at its source. And it's usually a lot less expensive to do that. I mean, it's a lot less expensive to clean gutters, right, than to have somebody install a sump pump. Uh, And even if you have a serious drainage problem outside, you know, usually it's a lot less expensive to deal with it that way than the systems these contractors are selling. Uh, If you have to regrade, for example, you know, you're just putting dirt down and, you know, What's the saying? You know, just cheap as dirt, cheap. Is cheap. That's where the expression right. comes exactly. from. Straight ahead, how you can skip the credit monitoring or do it yourself and save $30 a month. This is Consumerpedia. Checkbook.org can save you money on all sorts of services you need and help you find high quality businesses in your area. From tax preparers and auto mechanics to electricians and plumbers, we have ratings in these seven metro areas Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, Seattle, San Francisco, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Washington, D.C. To find out more, visit checkbook.org. Our advice is always free. Ratings of local services are available with a subscription. If you live in one of these seven areas and haven't joined Checkbook yet, check us out. Get a free 30-day subscription by going to checkbook.org slash consumerpedia. We're talking with Kevin Brassler, executive editor of Checkbook.org, about things you probably shouldn't pay for. And uh, you can find that listed on the website, uh, Checkbook.org. Kevin, let's talk about some services that people pay for that they probably don't need to pay for the services. Not that the services are bad. You just don't have to pay for them. And let's start out with credit monitoring. I get asked about this every single speech I make. Should I get credit monitoring? We're all afraid of identity theft. And I'll tell you the answer I give, and then you can tell me if if you agree with it. And that is, if it gives you peace of mind and you want to pay 20 to 30 bucks a month to have peace of mind, that's fine. But it doesn't do anything for you that you couldn't do yourself. And it doesn't do many of the things they imply that they can do in the commercials. They can't stop you from becoming a victim of identity theft. Even if they find your information is on the dark web, which it probably is because of all the data breaches, they can't remove it from the dark web. That's the biggest problem that I have with these things. 
Yeah, and and they guarantee certain things. Like they guarantee that you won't have losses from identity theft. And if you do, they'll cover any losses. But they're, they're talking about financial losses. And most victims of identity theft don't experience a financial loss. It's just they have to spend a lot of time clearing it up, getting their credit history straightened out. And that's not what they're promising. That's not their guarantee. And you and I o- over the years have often said there are things you can do on your own that are pretty easy. For example, initiating a credit freeze on your on your credit so that you know people can't open accounts in your name uh, without your say so. That's really largely what these credit monitoring and, and you know lockdown services are promising to do. Well, you can do that in five minutes on your own. And speaking of that million dollar policy, I'd love to see a company that paid out a million dollars because as you said, in most cases, any loss is covered by the bank or the credit card company or something like that. It's not a financial loss kind of thing. It's a time and your life is ruined for the rest of your life because the cops stop you thinking you're a felon or something. That's not covered by these million dollar policies. We'll pay up to a million dollars if you're the victim of identity theft. Yeah, I mean, the promises they make are actually quite hollow when you think about them. Identity theft is a massive problem, don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is is that when there are fraudulent charges on your credit card, or even if somebody opens a credit card in your name and charges a bunch of stuff, you're not responsible for that. You don't have to pay. And so by promising a million-dollar payout, well, well, for what, (laughs) right? Right. I mean, in most cases, we're just not responsible for fraud. You know, in my case, I found that, you know, every time my credit score changes these days, my credit card company, one of them, sends me an email saying your credit score has changed. Uh, I mean, it's for free. There's just so many ways you can these days monitor your own credit. And you should anyways. You really shouldn't rely on some other company to do so. Paying each month, even for peace of mind, I don't think is worth it at all. I don't even think they're really offering peace of mind, given how hollow their guarantees are. And let's talk about cloud data backup. It makes a lot of sense to have your data backed up in the cloud. You're saying you just don't have to pay for it. You definitely want a mechanism to back up your data. Uh, whether you need to pay someone to do that, yeah, probably not. I mean, there are a lot of services that will, you know, store your stuff up to 10 gigabytes for free. And then if you need more than that, then you can pay extra. You could split your files up across multiple sites that allow that, right? One thing I do is I have tens of thousands of pictures of my kids and vacations and stuff. And I am worried about losing those. And they are more than the 10 gigabytes somebody would you know, normally give me for free. But we're Amazon Prime members. And Prime lets us back up pictures to its cloud unlimited for free. And so I'm still paying for Prime, but I'm using that for other things. And so that's a nice benefit I'm getting that a lot of people would want to look into, especially if they're Prime members. They don't heavily advertise that feature. Oh, that's great. I didn't know that at all. One that really bugs me is rental car insurance. You're at the counter and they do everything they can to try to sell you that coverage, which is probably not really good coverage and probably coverage you don't need. Yeah, I mean, you and I have spoken probably more about this topic than any other uh, in in our history together during our friendship and working relationship. And that is that what they're selling you at the counter, first of all, if you already have auto insurance, if you own a car and have auto insurance, what they're offering you is secondary insurance. So even if you have a problem, you have to file a claim with your own auto insurance company and then you can file a claim with whatever policy they've sold you at the counter. You know, usually it's just not coverage you're going to need. There's so much overlapping coverage that it's not worth the money. And once I was at the counter at Hawaii renting a car and the woman said to me, you know that if anything happens to this vehicle, you may be trapped on the island until we can get the parts to fix the thing if you don't take out the insurance policy. And I looked at her and I said, <laughs> and the problem with that would be? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know? Well, you found a good way to do this where you know, their American Express offers this standalone plan Yes. where, well, you explain it. I mean, I, I thought this was, if, yeah. if you actually care about this, it's actually a nice benefit that they're offering. For $25, you sign up for the program, the American Express car rental insurance program for $25. That's the primary insurance insurance. So if anything goes wrong, if you rent the car with American Express with that card, that's your primary insurance. You don't have to worry about your insurance. You don't have to worry about the credit card company and other credit card companies insurance, which most people don't realize is not primary insurance. They're saying they're protecting you. You'd have to file a claim with your insurance company first. And I actually had a problem. Somebody sideswiped our rental vehicle in the parking lot overnight in Hawaii. We took it back to the rental car. I didn't even know it. They had scratched the door and the guy says, hey, uh, what's this all about? And I just said, contact American Express. It was a $850 $850 repair and American Express took care of all the paperwork and everything and it was only $25. That's 
25 for the whole rental. That wasn't $25 right. a day for the whole rental. I think it's good for up to 30 days. So if you have an American Express card or are thinking about getting a card, that is really, really good protection. They don't really advertise it. And it's one of the best deals I found for people who rent a car. Yeah, it's the only way I think I would bother buying rental car coverage at all uh, is, mm-hmm. is by doing it through that program. Um, I've always been surprised that it's so inexpensive given what they're insuring against. I mean, it's primary insurance coverage. Other credit cards also offer rental car coverage, but what they're offering is just you know physical damage on the car, things like that. It's not as comprehensive as what American Express is offering. I've always been surprised that American Express could even do this, that for that premium, $25 premium, act as primary coverage. With all of these policies, though, you have to keep in mind that you have to reserve the car using that credit card and make all payments using that same credit card, using that American Express card. Consumerpedia Fast Facts. Out-of-network ATM fees can bring as high as $5 per transaction. Use your bank's app to find an in-network machine near you. Unless your car requires premium gas, stick with regular. Premium grade doesn't improve mileage or performance. And stretch your food budget by choosing store brands. You'll get good quality for a lot less. And final topic, energy waste or more likely saving energy by spending a lot of money for stuff. There are lots of things you can do around your home that will save a lot of energy and a lot of money, but don't require a lot of spend. So, you know, installing weather stripping, uh, just improving, you know, the leakage of your home so you're just not passively wasting energy is a good way to save a lot of money, even without having to spend a lot of money on, you know, more efficient furnace or solar panels or any of these things. Those are all great. They'll save you a ton of money on energy, but there are things you can do that don't cost much at all. And we're going to be talking about that in the next episode of Consumerpedia, which which, as you know, comes out every other Thursday right here where you're getting your podcast. Kevin Brassler is the executive editor of Checkbook.org. And I got to tell you, before we go, you spent eight ninety five dollars on a cable. I'm really surprised you broke down and spent that much. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. <laughs> well, congratulations on being so loose with your money, Kevin, and you'll have to make it up somewhere else. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find some way to save that $8.95 down the road here. Don't you worry. You'll find the complete list of 65 things you probably should not pay for on the Checkbook website, checkbook.org. Well, that's this edition of Consumerpedia. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to us on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Remember, we release new episodes every other Thursday. Another way you can support the show is to follow Consumerpedia on Facebook and Instagram and at My Consumerpedia on Twitter. I'm Herb Weisbaum, Checkbook.org. Consumerpedia is a public service of Checkbook.org. We're a unique nonprofit that empowers you, the consumer, to save money and make smarter choices. From auto repair shops to doctors, plumbers to vets, you can count on Checkbook.org to help you find the best services and avoid the worst. Local ratings are unbiased and accurate. If you live in or around these seven cities and haven't joined Checkbook yet, check us out. Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, Seattle, San Francisco, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Washington, D.C. To get your free 30-day subscription, go to checkbook.org slash consumerpedia. Consumerpedia, empowering consumers to save money and make smarter choices.